which are the yellow flags you should be paying attention to when reading a financial statement or valuing a company. In today's video, I will summarize the most commonly observed warning signal that have historically anticipated trouble for companies and that then have been mirrored in a drop in the stock price. So take out your notes because today you are going to learn how to screen for those warning signals when reading a financial statement. The goodwill is the difference between uh, the price paid to purchase a company and its net asset value. It basically represents uh, the company brand, uh, the reputation, uh, the skill of the employee, and therefore is considered an intangible asset. Having the goodwill figure always in check is important uh, in order to understand uh, potential uh, overpayment or excessive spending. Uh, in fact, uh, during a big uh, acquisition, there is the tendency to inflate uh, the market valuation of the business. And therefore, bullish market uh, tend uh, to uh, propel those uh, uh, big valuation of the businesses. And on the contrary, bearish market uh, can uh, wipe off completely the goodwill. In fact, uh, even great business, if purchased at the wrong price, uh, might become a high risk. Therefore, a goodwill above, for instance, 30% of total asset might become a warning signal. Receivable are the balance of money that are due to the company because of the goods and services provided, but which have not yet been transformed into cash, so they have not been paid yet. Having receivable growing faster than sales, it might signal that either customers are delaying payment or that the company is extending too favorable condition to their customer, which might then signal a bad earning quality. Inventory represents the raw material used in the production of goods or the goods produced that are available for sale. As you can understand, this represents probably the most important asset a company has because uh, this is the primary source of possible earnings. Therefore, having uh, an inventory to sales ratio growing uh, quickly, it might signal that uh, the company is investing a lot in the inventory but is not able uh, to then sell those uh, uh, goods uh, or on the contrary that uh, the sales uh, are decreasing uh, or growing uh, slower than the inventory. Determining how much debt uh, a company has is quite straightforward. You just basically have to look uh, at uh, the balance sheet uh, in the financial statement of a company sum the long-term and the short-term debt, and then subtract the available cash. This gives you the net debt the company has. However, knowing the amount of the net debt doesn't really tell you the full story, because it is important to understand the trend and also to be able to compare that figure with the peers of the company you are assessing. In terms of trend, it is important to understand whether the company is coming from a high level of debt and is significantly decreasing or even inverting the trend, or on the contrary, if the company has started from a low level of debt and debt has started to increase exponentially. Moreover, comparing that figure with the one of the peers is important because the industry and the sector might require a certain level of debt. But having that is not a bad signal per se, because ultimately companies have to invest in their growth, right? What is important to consider, on the contrary, is the company's ability to pay off that debt. And in that respect, it is worth having a look at the so-called leverage ratio, which basically is computed as the ratio between the net debt and the EBITDA, which you can find in the income statement. I would say that a level higher than 2.5 uh, free, then it might be considered uh, as a warning signal worth considering. When a company records a profit, uh, it flows in the so-called retained earnings. 
which is an equity account that is basically the cumulated figure of all profits recorded by the company since inception. On the contrary, if the company is recording a loss, that as well has to be shown in the retained earnings. So if a company is recording a losses that exceed all accumulated profit throughout the years, then the retained earnings account becomes negative. So in the end, a negative retained earnings account might signal the fact that the company has experienced significant losses, or on the contrary, that is distributing dividend out of profit that has not made or not yet made. Revenue growth uh, lagging behind uh, those uh, of the competitors uh, for uh, at least uh, two, three years might be a warning signal. In fact, it might signal that the company is uh, losing uh, pricing power or is losing market share. The gross margin is one of the most important uh, indicators uh, of the financial performance of the company that can be directly computed uh, by means of the data in a financial statement. It is the difference between the revenues and the direct cost uh, divided by the revenues. So a declining gross margin, uh, also with respect to the peers, uh, might be an important voting signal to consider. In fact, they might highlight the fact that costs are rising quite fast or that the company is not anymore able to apply, to apply the same price or that the company is losing its market share or is losing also competitive advantage. Net income is the profit that the company is able to generate because of its activity. On the contrary, cash flow from uh, operation uh, represent, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, the cash inflows and outflows. Uh, the link between the two is represented from the fact that, that uh, the cash flow from operation uh, starts from the net income. However, having a, a cash flow from operation uh, significantly below the net income uh, might be a yellow flag. In fact, uh, net income can be easily manipulated uh, because there are non-cash items, like for instance uh, uh, amortization expenses, uh, that can be considered and fly into the net income calculation. Therefore, having a check between these two items, the net income and cash flow from operation, is very important because a discrepancy, a significant discrepancy between the two, might be a warning signal to consider as well. When assessing a management compensation, it's quite hard to draw a line to discriminate between what can be considered a fair compensation and what can be considered, on the contrary, an aggressive compensation. This topic might deserve a dedicated video. However, today I'm going to give you some inputs that should drive your assessment. The first one is how well the management have run the company. In particular, you have to look at uh, what uh, the management has promised and what they have delivered. If the management uh, was able to add value also in comparison with their peer, if the management uh, was consistently able to allocate capital in a profitable way, and then compare the compensation of the management of the company you are assessing and the compensation of the management of other peers. A second driver for your valuation should be the incentive alignment. In particular, it might be considered a warning signal if the management incentive is skewed towards the short term, because this might signal also the incentive to take high risk, which is of course not aligned with the shareholder long-term incentive. An auditor opinion uh, is a certification that accompanies the financial statement. It is basically certifying uh, that there have not been a material misstatement uh, when preparing uh, the financial statement by the company. The most unfavorable uh, auditor opinion uh, is a negative uh, one because uh, this is basically certifying uh, that uh, there have been material and pervasive uh, misstatement in the preparation of the financial statement. 
You should pay a lot of attention every time you find a negative auditor opinion because this usually might signal a fraud. This video was a summary of the most commonly observed warning signal that have historically anticipated trouble for company and significant decline in their stock prices. If you want to remain up to date and learn more about investing, then don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and pin the notification bell. Also, please use the comment box below in case you want us to dig deeper into some of the aspects I touched upon during today's video. So that's all for today. Cheers and see you next time.